Hello. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We love it. We do love it when you guys share your video if you can. Um, it's not required, but it's really wonderful to see everybody's faces on this Saturday um, morning. I think we have every single type of day. Morning. Hi. 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 We we have morning for the West Coasters, afternoon for the East Coasters, and evening for the Kenyans. Well, <laughs> hello, everyone. Hi. Great. We're just going to wait um, for a couple of people to get their sound set up. And, you know, before we get started, um, I did want to introduce you guys to um, some special people we have today. Um, first of all, if any of you were at our very, very early girls club classes, you'll know that one of our first, um, teachers was actually the young 12 year old Ellen Wang, who's a founding member of unruly Queens. And she also um, works with a school in Kenya to teach girls chess. Um, and they might be able to actually call in today to join the rest of our Kenyan friends. Wow. So we're re really excited to have you, Ellen. Yeah, I'm very excited to be meeting everyone and to see all the young talent that will likely be um, upcoming in the future years. Yes, thank you, Ellen. And um, of course, we also have um, Judith um, Karagu, who's helped put this together. She's the founder of the Lighthouse Chess Club, and she is the boss of all the uh, the Kenyan chess scene, as far as I can tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks again for putting this together Judith thank you so much hi everybody and finally we're going to meet her more later but um Lisa Batiste is going to give us a special presentation later on confidence and she is a board member of Business Meets Kids Meets Chass, which is an organization that Grandmaster Carlson, um, who is in here in this call as well, Pontus Carlson, um, founded. And she's super inspiring. I got a little preview of the lesson, as some of you did as well. So actually, because I was so inspired by the contents of what Lisa is going to be teaching you later today, I decided to make my part of the chess lesson um, related to confidence as well, because I actually think it's the um, most important mental game uh, skill for me as a chess player. When I became a chess champion, I always struggled with confidence on both sides. Um, there's two ways in chess to be um, overconfident or underconfident, right? So when I became a champion and won my two U.S. Women's Championship titles, I really was able to kind of strike that right balance, but there were a lot of pitfalls on the road to that. And so today I'm going to show you two of them. And we're going to start actually with one from the first time I played the U.S. Junior Closed. So the yes. uh, U.S. Junior Closed, the, the, the year that I played, um, I... I got into it by winning the U.S. Junior Open, and I was the first girl to ever win that event. Um, so this year actually was the very first year that they had two women in the U.S. Junior Clothes, or two girls, rather. Um, it's an under-21 tournament. Uh, so I was really nervous because I was the lowest-rated player in the tournament. And before I share my screen with you, I am going to put one poll on the, on the board for you guys. I think this is really an important question for you guys, especially as we start thinking about playing over the board chess again one day soon. All right. So what, how does this relate to confidence? Like what I'm asking here, can anybody figure out what that might mean about confidence? Um, Let's see. Um, why am I asking about time pressure when, we're, when our topic today is confidence? Um, Lila? Um, maybe because if you're playing really fast, you're overconfident and you're just like, oh, I don't need to take my time. I already know all my moves. And then maybe if you're playing slow, you're like overlooking things and you're like, you're just like, oh, maybe that's not a good move. Maybe I should look for more. And then you're in time pressure. And if you're Very managing good. your time well, you're like just using it just right. Great, great. Does anybody have anything to add to that? Violet? Oh, you were turning your hand down. I thought you were trying to unmute yourself. 
Um, okay. Well, yeah, I think that that pretty much hits it. I do think that in addition to that, I'd say that when you're underconfident, sometimes you just run in circles in your variations and you look at something and then you look at it again and look at it again and make sure you're right. And to some extent that can be okay. Like if you think your opponent might be about to checkmate you, by all means, double, triple check. But if you do that in every position, that's bad because you're just going to end up so short of time that it's going to be a big problem. Um, so um, let me show you one game. But before that, I'm going to try to show you a video clip. I want to show you the game I'm playing against a guy who was just featured in a movie called Critical Thinking, which was about a chess team in Miami. Um, so a lot of, a lot of um, chess, um, a chess team in Miami that won against a lot of great chess teams all over the country. And it was a really inspiring movie. It actually just came out like a month ago. So I highly recommend it. And this scene is about a Cuban immigrant who just got into Miami, who like literally just moved there and wanted to be on the chess team. And while his fellow teammates were definitely in for a happy surprise to include him on the team. And here is the clip. I will share it with you guys now. So Marcel Martinez is obviously a very talented player, and he was the player that I played in the game that I'm about to show you guys. Um, I was friends with him because I also played in these tournaments that are featured in the movie. So uh, I knew that he was a very, very good blitz and blindfold player. Sometimes when you know how talented your opponent can be, you can be a little bit intimidated. So I think that was a little bit of an issue coming into this game. All right, so um, I'm gonna share my screen again so you can see this game. So Marcel Martinez, um, in the movie, they depicted how he ended up going on to win the National High School Championship. And so uh, he was you know, underestimated by a lot of people because he went to um, a public school that didn't have a, a lot of access to travel. Um, but Cuba has a very, very strong chess culture, and obviously the kid was super, super talented. So it was a really inspiring movie. Um, you guys should see it. It's available on uh, Apple. It's kind of sad. It, it was one of these movies that would normally have like a wide theatrical release, but obviously because of COVID, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys can see my screen now? Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Uh, so this, this opening was one that I used to really struggle with. I'm a very aggressive player. So this type of ready opening where you don't make any initial claim for the center was something that I often struggled with. So already, you know, you, I, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I started using a lot of time from the very beginning of the game. And that was like what do you guys think of the movie five? What do you think the, the idea is with that move? What do you think the idea is there? Um, maybe because you're trying to move your actual pawn on the E. Um, some, maybe like you shouldn't go to like there and all because maybe they could bring down their pawn and all and they could capture your other pawn. Well, it's, it's, it's a positive and a negative, the movie E5. The positive is that a couple of people mentioned in the chat, it's hard for him to play D4 now. The biggest negative of the move is what? Somebody can just say it in the chat. You don't have to unmute yourself for this one. Yes, Lila got it. Anyone else? Um, this is actually a big negative, so I actually want you guys to see this. There's, E5 is not a bad move. It's not a bad move, but it has one very, very big negative. Like what's, what's the worst thing about having this move in the position? Oops, I'm trying to highlight that square. There we go. What is the worst thing? Weakens, okay, we've got a couple other people. So the problem is the D5 square is very weak. And a knight, when, I, when you see that these pawns are both advanced like this, this knight is suddenly very, very excited. I mean, I know it's on B1 and hasn't moved yet, but it's still very excited because it has a prime destination. Like this is the most beautiful place to be because it's an outpost knight. An outpost knight is when a knight can't be attacked by any pawns. And because pawns don't move backwards, these pawns will never, ever, ever to be able to shut out a knight on d5. Yet, it's still a good move because it's active 
and I get to play aggressively. Like I could sometimes get to play F5 and sometimes I can play for D5. So it's nice that I have a lot of options. All right, so uh, those are my ideas here. Get in D5, get in F5. But first I decided to like mostly develop my position and also to prevent him from playing B4. Because of course that's the idea when they play Rook B1. They want to try to play B4 here. Now what, what do you think I can maybe do here after Knight C2? Any ideas? What is it? Bishop, Bishop f5 pinning the knight. Okay, bishop f5 is not my favorite move. Who said that? But it's an instructive move because I like that I can explain why I don't love it. Ananya. Ananya. Okay, bishop f5. Anybody see like a negative of bishop f5? Um, what I think of bishop f5. Um, so after bishop f5, it kind of, I know it kind of looks like it's actually attacking the knight on c2, but it, to me it kind of looks like that the bishop is mainly kind of, well, going to be like, maybe after like d3, it could also block the bishop to attack on knight yeah, it's very good. It blocks the bishop from attacking after d3. And you could play e4, a d3, and then e4, and they could gain more center space. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Would you mind if you wait till I call on you guys? Because I'm going to try to move pretty fast so we can get through both games. Um, okay, so knight c2, absolutely. Uh, bishop f5. Also, Ananya, if you, if you listen to what I said, I mentioned that for black, one of the main ideas is to play f5. So if you put the bishop on f5, then you can't play f5, right? Um, so I just played bishop to e6, but another idea that was mentioned, which was excellent, is that eventually I also am really interested in playing the move um, a4, which I did as soon as this knight occupies d5, um, and they can't really take on a4 with the queen because knight takes e2 is a really nice move to play. So they played b4. Now I have a lot of options here. I decided to play knight b3, which I think is a really interesting move. Um, the reason I didn't just play a move that, you know, I would have normally made a poll here, but I wanted to go through this pretty quickly. The reason I didn't do just that is because I thought that after e3, knight c2, rook b3, I could actually be in a little bit of trouble here because where does a knight go? I mean, it only has one square and it's very unenviable, right? Knight a1, <laughs> not what you want, not what you want. I'm probably gonna get that knight trapped, right? Um, maybe you can hold on to it for a minute by playing like rook b1, e4, but it's probably not gonna be a good position for black at all. So um, it's kind of an unusual situation where you offer me the opportunity to en passant, and I don't take it because it looks like the en passant is not really gonna go anywhere after e3. So I actually just put my knight on b3 instead. And then he played bishop b2. I took, he doesn't want to let me take the bishop. And then I played b5, which just seems like a really good move to me because his pieces are kind of bottled in now. And it's like knight is blocking the rook and the queen from being active. Um, and now I played queen d7 to get more pieces into the game. And e3 was played here. I have some different good ideas here. I think one idea, like which I kind of alluded to earlier, is to play f5 and try to attack. Um, I decided to play rook c8 and attack this pawn first. And after queen e2, I now play this interesting move bishop g4, which looks a little weird because they can just attack me. But does anybody think about like why I might not have been that upset by having white play f3? Can anybody think why like maybe that's not such a bad thing? Hana? Did you have, did you unmute yourself to answer or? No, maybe not. Um, yes, Violin and Sharia both say because it blocks the bishop. So I actually did it intentionally thinking that like this bishop was gonna be blocked. Um, and then he played f4 and now he played bishop g4 again. So we're doing this little dance of the bishops here. And he played bishop to f3 and now I was happy because I got him to trade off this beautiful bishop that really dominates the whole board, stretching from h1 to a8. So I was very, very happy to just take this bishop off. And now after rook takes f3, I have another poll for you guys here. So what would you do here? 
And last time, I think I got 44 out of 48 of you to vote. And I know we have like two or three grownups who might not even be voting. So that was a really good record. So I'd like to do that again, because I know not everybody raises their hand, not everybody chats, but if I see all of you voting, then I know that you're all listening. And I love that. But you don't have to vote yet. I'm going to give you guys to at least a minute and a half. All right, well, if you're kind of on the fence about a couple moves, just vote now, because we're going to um, move on and um, see what I did and how the game continued. All right, great. So uh, 31 of you voted, not bad. And I think one person voted in the chat. So we got a pretty decent participation. But let's um, unmute one person. Who wants to be unmuted uh, to give their answer? Um, Bernice, what would you have done? Uh, I would have moved my queen to g4, pinning the rook to the queen so I can give it pressure. I like the idea of being really aggressive here and looking for loose pieces, like this queen on e2 is unprotected. But queen g4 is not a great move because there is something that white can do too, right? If you play queen g4, suddenly the knight on d5, which remember I mentioned that before, is very, very strong, can now go to e7 and check. And even though this knight is pinned, I don't think you have a great continuation after this. Um, it's, it's interesting though, there's still more to analyze because maybe you can play knight d2 at the end of it. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna turn out very well for you because the problem is you are still gonna end up being down an exchange, down a piece if I get to move my knight out of date. So yeah, you win some material back because you get to take this rook, but then I'm still up a piece at the end of the day, right? That's the problem, but really good idea, uh, but not the best move. Uh, Ananya, what were you gonna do? I was going to play e4 with the, uh, with the idea of opening up your bishop since e5 blocked the bishop. And also if the pawn takes, then you can play pawn takes c4 if you want, and you can also regain your pawn and also get the pass pawn. Beautiful. And white pawns became crippled kind of. Beautiful, beautiful answer, Ananya, that's exactly right. And I think the thing is, you know, I actually only watched this game because I saw critical thinking and I remembered I played a lot of games against Marcel. And I remember looking at this game, you know, a couple nights ago after watching the movie. And I was like, I, I remembered in this game, I got into severe time pressure and you're gonna see what happens. But what I can say up to move 25 is that I, I mean, not trying to brag, but I played exceptionally well in this game so far. I mean, I think so far this is like a great game. And like, especially this move, like the little dance of the bush bishop and then playing e4, like I'm totally crushing him and he played my least favorite opening, right? I mean, this is fantastic. I've got a c pawn, my knight on b3 is wonderful, my bishop on g7 is great, my rook on c8, I'm his bishop is terrible on a3, his knight on d5 is strong, but you can't win a game with one piece. So um, I should have felt really good about myself in this position, but I took so much time to get into this position that now I just fell apart. And you'll see in the next few moves what happened. First of all, in this position, I know that I was in huge time pressure here because it's very obvious now that I can just move my pawn forward and like, he, he just, he can't defend. I'm just gonna make a queen. Like there's, there's nothing really to analyze here. It's like, he has to move the rook away, then I move the bishop away, then he can't stop my pawn from queening. But when you're in really big time pressure, what happens is you don't wanna even calculate things like that. You kinda wanna just like win in a very, very solid way, especially cause I knew my position was strong. So I, I, I didn't go for the really direct win, didn't have time to calculate it. And I just started like, you know, really making some bad moves. As you can see, finally I play C3, but not without giving him counterplay for no reason at all. And um, yeah, the, the game starts to fall apart really, really quickly. The rails come off. I, I, listen, I'm trying to queen the pawn and now I'm trying to checkmate him. Doesn't make any sense. It's all time pressure at this point. And I'm down a piece, I have some play, but he played excellently, queen d5, great move. Now all the sacrifices I made, I don't have enough firepower to mate him. 
and he was able to stymie all of my counterplay and uh, win the game. So uh, I think the, the thing lesson here for me was that he, because of his great talent and his skill in blitz, before I sat down, I was thinking, you know, he's so good. I'm going to have to play a really good game to beat him. And not only that, he plays my least favorite opening. Then I proceeded to play almost perfectly for 25 moves, but because of my lack of confidence, I didn't give myself the chance to win because I was so low on time at the end of that. Oh, great, great. Ellen said that her school um, um, has arrived. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to try to say hi to them. Um, after we move to the next game. So that game gave me an important lesson. And it's funny because a couple years later, I played Marcel a mini match and he actually told me after the match, which was quite interesting, but he did win. He said, you know, you're such a great player. You should have even more confidence. And that's something that really stuck with me. And when I look back over this game, I kind of understood why he said that because I played such a good game with the black pieces against it, an uh, opening that is really hard to play really aggressively against. So that is one pole of confidence where you're underconfident and you play too slowly. A lot of times your moves are gonna be really good for a while, but then they're gonna just totally fall off the rails because you don't have time to calculate. And now I'm gonna show you the exact polar opposite, which was a game in the US Women's Championship the year before I won the US Women's Championship. Yeah, there it is, okay. so. I played my favorite opening. So this is funny. We're going from my least favorite opening to my favorite opening. So that's another interesting lesson about confidence, right? I was so happy in this game because I got to play my favorite opening. Does anybody want to guess what it is? I might have said it a couple times in class before. Or my favorite opening when I was a kid. Yep, Ellen got it. Dragon. In defense. The dragon defense. Loved this opening. It's a variation of the Sicilian where I get to put my bishop on the long diagonal and it is very, very tactical and aggressive. So actually, I wanted to ask you a question. No, I'll, I'll keep moving. But why do you think White Castle queenside? Any ideas why White Castle's queenside here rather than kingside? Somebody would have raised their hand. Somebody I haven't heard from yet today. Raise your virtual hand or your real hand. I'm gonna take a look around and see who is raising their hands. Laurel, what would you say? Sorry, I'm um, to Pawn Storm. Yes, beautiful, to Pawn Storm on the queen side. And by the way, as I was flipping through the, uh, the Zoom call, I saw that the girls from uh, Salama Gachi have arrived. So big welcome. Thank you guys for joining our class today. Really happy to have you here. And thanks to Ellen for arranging it. And yes, Laura, you're absolutely right. You pawn storm. So white castled in this direction because they want to attack my king over here. Very beautiful. And I played knight takes e4, bishop e6. So I'm trying to do the same thing. I want to attack her king. So that's why I played queen a5. Now I have a poll question for you. What would you do here? So I knew I wanted to move a rook to c8, but which one? Now I know the girls from Salamagachi, you only get one vote, sorry. So you guys have to talk to each other, pick your, pick your move. And let me know if it's, if it's a close call, okay? Do you wanna move the rook over here next to the king to c8 or the one on um, a8 to c8? And then you know, once you guys decide as a group, you can, uh, you can vote. If you don't see the vote popping up, you can just like let me or Alan know in the chat. All right, a lot of you have voted. Anybody wanna be unmuted and tell me which one you did and why? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Cassidy. I think there might be a couple Elizabeths on the call, but Elizabeth Cassidy from, yes. Okay, so I will choose the F1 to give my king some space. Maybe if it is the attack a lot, maybe it will have some, a lot of space. At least. Great, great. That is what I played. Um, excellent. And I, there is a more specific reason, but your instincts are exactly right, Elizabeth. So I did play Rook FC8, and we're going to find out why in a minute. Um, some of you might know if you play the dragon. Does anybody already know, actually? Because if you do, I'll give you a chance to explain why. Uh, I know Ellen and Alice probably know as they're 
um, 2,000 plus players, but anybody else? Uh, Lila? Um, you need to play um, Rook FC8 because if you play Rook AC8, then you, the white can play Knight D5. You would take the Queen, and then the Knight could take on E7, and then they win a pawn. But if when the Rook moves to C8, and the Knight takes on E7, you can go King F8, and when they take your Queen back, you're you get the Knight, and it's a Knight for a pawn. Beautiful. Very good. Very good. Okay. So um, we'll, we'll go over that in a second. So, she, so what Lila is saying is that, um, no, I want to play a6. Um, rook c8 here, if I move the a rook after knight d5, if I play queen takes queen check, white has a really good in-between move. Um, did everybody follow it? Anybody know what, what in-between move white has here? Anybody? Want to guess what white does Knight here? Takes yep. E7. Exactly. Knight takes e seven. Checks annoying. Although, yeah, the story move. The story goes on actually. It's a folk. Because at the end of the variation, rook c eight. But it still uh, looks like a good line for white. So um, that's why I play rook fc eight. Excellent to everybody who guessed rook fc eight, which was way more than half of you. Um, good job because it's counterintuitive. So now she can't take care because if she does, what do I do? Can I ask the girls from Salami Gachi what they would play? I want to see how your sound is. Do you want to say hello and tell me where you would move the king if this happened? I'm going to try. I don't know how their sound is. Maybe we can try later. Do you guys want to say hi? I think they're, I, I'm not sure their sound is working, um, but hello everyone. It's great to see you guys here. Uh, you can, if you can chat and, and you want to contribute any moves, we'd love to hear from you. But um, King F8 is the point, which a lot of you are saying in the chat now. That the King of F8 now attacks this knight so that when the rook takes the queen, we get to take here. And now we're actually up a piece. We have a bishop, a bishop, and a knight, and all you have is two bishops. So this is the entire reason why rook C8. If you've never seen it before, it's actually like kind of hard to see. So don't feel bad if you got it wrong. Is, don't feel bad if you got it wrong. I would have done it wrong if I didn't play the dragon. Yes? yes? So in this position, I, what was I gonna say? I was just gonna say about work FC8. I was in the middle of saying that it's actually pretty difficult. So don't feel bad about it. I think that if I'd never seen it, I wouldn't get it either. That's the thing about chess. Like if there's something you've never seen before, it's gonna be so much harder for you to see it. And that's why we have training sessions like this one. So um, I like my position here. I think black's a little bit better because I have my rooks doubled up on this file, which is really nice. I'm trying to play rook takes c2. But my opponent has a good idea here. And it's really interesting after this. What would you do if you were white here? Somebody show me, tell me a move they would play as white. Play as white. Nice. Okay, we got a couple of people who have ideas. Beautiful. I'm gonna wrap the, I, okay, cool. I'm gonna, okay. All right, got it. So um, bishop c4, exactly, bishop c4. And now I played bishop takes c4, and after king c3, I have this move, bishop f1 check, which checks the king and wins this pawn on g2. So now we're in a really interesting position where I have a lot of pawns for the exchange. Um, I think it's a pretty equal position at the moment, but it's a little bit easier for black to play because if I start getting the pawns rolling, it's gonna be big problems for white. And now I play this move g5, which gets me this pass pawn on the h file, which is really beautiful. And so that's what I did. And I moved my, my king forward because if I play h4 now, the move e5 might be really nice. So here we go. I'm trying to queen my pawn. And now I played h2. And after rook e1, how does black win here? What can black play now? Bishop yeah. and three. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, Bernice, wonderful. 
Bishop F3 is winning because now I'm going to try. There's no way to stop me from making a queen. But I, you know, I was really feeling great about how I played in this game, and I did play well in this game. And I was aware of it, unlike in the game against Marcel, where I was really feeling down on myself. Um, and what happened here was I had to decide how to finish off this game. I mean, I've got a bishop for a pawn, so I should be totally winning. But after king c5, what should black do? And this is the last position in the game, and then we're going to move on to Lisa's presentation. What would you do here as black? So one of the things is normally I'm a pretty slow player. I use most of my allotted time in this game because I was feeling so great about my play, the exchange sacrifice, the opening play. I actually played quicker than normal, and I made a really good calculation here meaning that it was actually really good, but not complete. So I'll give you guys 10 more seconds to answer, and then um, I'm going to show you what happened. By the way, this US Women's Championship, I actually came in second by half a point. By half a point. And you're going to see what happens in this game. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop the poll now so we can show. And I played at 5 which a lot of you played. And now my idea was that after B takes A6, F2, A7, queen, queen, I win the game after queen H1 scoring the queen, right? But I played so fast, I forgot that here, instead of takes on A6, what can white do? Push the B pawn. Beautiful, Bernice. Beautiful, Violet, Pali Chai, Liliana, Shariah. Um, B6, and now actually it's a draw. I mean, unbelievable, right? I, you know, I, I played so well, and I actually had 45 minutes left on my clock, and I just played F5 thinking that the pawn end game was totally winning, and I lost this women's championship by half a point. Instead, good job to those of you who picked actually the least popular move on the ball which is bishop a8, which is completely winning and requires no calculation because I'm just going to queen the pawn and you're nowhere even close to queening yours. I mean, it's not even close. It's not a race, right? I mean, uh, I'm just queening and you can't stop and I can't, and my bishop's stopping yours. If you try to play king b6, it's, um, yeah, you're, you're just way too slow. I'm sorry, I don't even, I can just move my bishop. Yeah, I just move my bishop. It's even easier. So anyway, I thought that was a good lesson for you guys, a tale of overconfidence and underconfidence. In a future lesson, I will show you how I struck the right balance and won the US Women's Championship a couple years later. But uh, that is the chess application of what um, our very special guest today, Lisa Batiste, is going to show you. So I would uh, love to give her the floor as she has some special guests from the audience who are also going to speak about this topic. Thanks, Jennifer. Hello, ladies. How are you all? I absolutely want everybody to unmute and say hello if you can. If not, in the chat, please. Hi. 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 Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Oh, your voices are so beautiful. <laughs> it is so nice to meet each of you. If you would at this time mute your calls again, and the first person I would like for you to uh, hear is Lucy. I'd introduce her, but I have a sneaking suspicion you absolutely know who she is. Lucy, she has a special presentation for us. I want you to listen carefully to her words. Hello, guys. Hello, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a short wrap. I wrote it myself. I hope it's going to encourage some of you. So here it goes. Lyrics in my head are constellated. I get fascinated how my mind procreated. Sophisticated with brain cells so automated. Yet I've been underestimated. Underrated, I elevated to a level that was overrated. 
confiscated everything that I ever hated. Got my future and my plans. I've been shooting for the stars, but it's complicated. Misinterpreted in a world that I was rejected. Alienated till I felt so alienated till I felt so humiliated. The more these people hated, the more I lost my patience. So I emanated into a world that I created. Anticipated that I would never be dominated. My ego's not inflated. I just think it's constipated. I appreciated every bad apple I ever tasted. If it wasn't for the dark, I wouldn't be illuminated. I'm encrypted. You tried to crack my code, but was defeated. I deleted everybody who could never hack the system. Like a piston, push me down, I'll be back on the ceiling. I'm consistent. Nothing is ever gonna stop my mission. Yeah, that's it. Woo, everybody on mute. Wonderful, wow. Lucy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I love it. Too. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you so much. What an amazing job. I hope each of you have pencils or, or pen and something to write on. Um, right now, what I'd like to do is introduce a couple of ladies that I think that you know, uh, Sasha and Joy. And at this time, what I'd like uh, Sasha and Joy to do is to give us an example of nonviolent communication. My observation, male opponents imitating female opponents when paired against them, it, it, it hurts and it is disappointing from a female side of view. What is it that you would say you would need, Sasha, to make uh, you I'm feel, lost. make things different? Uh, for, uh, male opponents to stop intimidating female players and treat them the same way they treat male players. Very good, Sasha. So did everyone get that? Sasha would like to see what her request is, is that male players engage with female players equally and positively the way that they do with their uh with their counterpart male players Did everyone get that thank you so much sasha how many of you feel the same how many of you have felt that same way i see elizabeth and ananya and via raising their hands perfect let's hear from someone who's not spoken so you pick someone jennifer um, I think Via hasn't spoken yet today. Via? Okay. Hi, Via. I don't hear you yet. Um, let me let me get a let me get a Elizabeth on while we wait for Via sound to work. Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, what I just think about right away is that boys always underestimate girls, and that is wrong. When they get being beaten, they always feel bad. And so, how does that make you feel? Uh, yeah, it makes me feel bad. Bad, yeah. but when I beat a boy, it makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. I understand that. Thank you so much for contributing. Let's hear from Joy before we before we. Close. I am so sorry, Joy. Joy, are you? She's still here. She's still here. There she is. Beautiful. Thank you, Joy. Could you give your expression, please, in the, from using the four elements? Uh, mine was an example from a game I played. Just like Sasha's example, I was playing versus a guy. So he was very optimistic. He was very sure he was going to beat me. So as we were playing, he was just sacrificing pieces, left, right, and center. And I was actually scared at some point. I was wondering, why is he so confident? Okay, then I decided, okay. My chess, coach, my chess coach did not say these works, so there must be something wrong. I just made the right move, the next right move. Before he knew it, I was winning. Okay. And the guy was very smug, because before the game, he was telling all his friends, there's no way I'm losing to a girl. Okay. Hi. Once I lost, I was so excited. I wanted to jump around. Of course, that's illegal. You're not supposed to disturb the other people who are playing in the hall. So what I did is I shook his hand and then I said, good game. I didn't want to brag at that point, but I rushed to the bathroom and then jumped there. And I was so happy because I won against him. 
but uh-huh. the point is, yeah, <laughs> um, maybe in maybe field sports, maybe if I was jumping or skipping, maybe he'll have an edge because he's taller. Okay, but when it comes to chess, we are all equal. Everyone has a functioning brain, and we should all be up to the task. Don't be scared. Just make the best move. And if you win, remember to say good game, even if your opponent was scary. When if they, you know, some people when you're playing, you just get that feeling. This day is very violent, okay? So when you're playing, you just make the best moves. And after the game, don't forget to tell the person good game, whether you lost or you won. Yeah, that's. Thank you so much, Dorothy. That's such a quality. While I wanted you to, to engage earlier, that was such a quality ending. Thank you so much. I'm glad it all happened the way it should have. So ladies, she observed what was going on with this gentleman. He was verbally trying to intimidate her with all his chatter about being, you know, he was going to win and beat her as well as uh, visually and trying to be intimidating. Is that correct, Joy? Yeah, yeah. And so that feeling, I'm sure you felt a little smidgen of intimidation, but you recognized what you needed to do. What you needed to do was tell yourself, you know what, I've got to be positive and I've got to make sure that I know my game and my strategies really well and implement them. So the request was really to yourself to continue to engage with this person until you felt comfortable the way that you engage with him the need was to engage with him uh politely beginning of the game and politely after the game as well as staying sure and clear about your strategies during the game is that would that be accurate an accurate description accurate. perfect so ladies again watching she watched her thoughts as well as she didn't allow anyone and that was, and my favorite thing about that story, Lisa, is that she really showed empathy. And even though her opponent was, um, you know, not very nice at the beginning of the game and was trying to intimidate her, she actually went out of her way to hold in her excitement and not brag. And that just goes to show, even if somebody does something that's not nice to you, you can still take the higher road. And I just love it. It's exactly. Story. Thank you so much, Excuse Jennifer. Excuse me. That's definitely a point. Just one moment, J- uh, J- Jamie Lynn. Um, that's exactly the, the next point that I was going to make is that she was able to work both sides of the nonviolent communication engagement. And I, I don't really like that title, but that's the title that the author gave it. But I love those elements and how they allow students to, uh, or anyone to effectively communicate how they're feeling without feeling guilty, as well as receive information in a way that makes sense. You recognize he was probably feeling a little insecure, huh, Joy? <laughs> yeah, he was. I don't know what he, he told the other guys because he had already promised them to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably just trying That's to make me. himself feel better. <laughs> Okay, well, that is the end of my presentation. I appreciate your time, everyone, and I hope that you were able to uh, reap some benefits from the presentation. If you would like to leave a comment in the, in the chat about what it is that you, you uh, enjoyed about this presentation, I'd appreciate it. There you go, Jennifer, it's all yours. Thank you so much. And I'll let people um, use the chat box a little bit as I close out the session. Um, Big thank you to everyone. And of course, as always to Judith for her wonderful job and to Pontus. Um, And uh, yeah, we've got a lot more exciting stuff coming up. But in the meantime, I'm sure we're gonna have a tournament in one of our future sessions. So make sure you get signed up on that chess.com group so that when we have a tournament, you can participate. Like all of our tournaments, if you, I have a question. If you can't, one second, Jamlin. If if you uh, don't want to play or if it's not really working for you to play, I always do commentary so that if you can't play, you can at least watch me talk about the instructional. How book. can you? Um, but uh, get signed up so that we can do that next time. Um, Jamlin, you wanted to make one more comment. I can't hear her anymore. Okay, but again, big thank you to Lisa. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes, what's your question, Jamlin? 
Oh, you can put it in the chat, Tamalyn. It's weird. You keep saying hello, and then I can't hear you. Um, but, but Judith, do you have any final words as well? Sign off words? Um, yes, I just want to thank uh, Joy, uh, Lucy, and Sasha. These are Kenyans, uh, Kenyans uh, top girls. They play, they, play, they play on the national team, and uh, they have gone through uh, a lot to get to where they are. And uh, truly, truly, I mean, and, and Anne also is also in the group. And so they uh, can relate a lot with the intimidation that takes place over the board. And um, I, I'm just glad that they are being the bigger people uh, and, and, and that they're taking it all so well and, 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 and they're working towards improving their game so that, you know, yes, they, uh, they, 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 they improve on their chess and even if they win or they don't, I mean, you know, they, they empathize and- Excuse, and, and, excuse and, me, I can't hear you. Germany. Demeline, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will talk to you very shortly. So I just want to thank uh, the three ladies. Um, uh, thank you so much for coming uh, on the on uh, and joining uh, joining the team. And um, uh, the club is already quite, you know, I mean, uh, we've got quite a uh, Jennifer GM Jennifer has already challenged all of you to challenge her. She has requested that you challenge her, so kindly please sign up, sign into your chess.com and uh, challenge uh, Jennifer to a game so that uh, she, uh, you can start playing against Jennifer or against uh, some of the other, other girls from the US. And I think this is uh, perfect. And uh, just one more thing. Um, I know that uh, we all have different ranges in age and um, and, and, I, and I'm so uh, glad and I, I really appreciate that we are able to accommodate the really young girls like uh, Jamelin. Uh, uh, if you look at Jamelin and then look at uh, the national girls like uh, Anne, Sasha, Joy, uh, the fact that we can all be on the same platform, I think it's an amazing thing. And um, Moving forward, I think we are going to be able to uh, generate a crop of girls who are uh, understand one another much better, and they are able to relate to one another in a in a in a in a way that's going to be beneficial for all of us. So yeah, thank you. I'm really really glad about this session. Thank you so much, Jennifer. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, Jennifer, I think that I, I can't wait to come and learn some things about playing Jeff. <laughs> oh, yay, excuse yes. Me, uh, excuse me, I have a question. Yes. yes. <laughs> How can you become a GM? Hey, you already asked me that. I said you got to study a lot <laughs> and you got to challenge me and your other friends on chess.com. Then you got to study those games. Then you got to use what you're studying and play some more games, and then do that like a 50 to 5,000 more times. <laughs> Seriously, it, it does take a lot of hard work, but I know you're all up for it. Oh, I didn't know that, did I? You gotta study and you gotta play. The fun and the work. Yeah. And you know, we're always, uh, uh, you can always ask questions in that uh, Kenya US Chess Girls chat group as well. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Good night to everyone in Kenya. And well, good afternoon to all of my American friends. <laughs> good night. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.